You're listening to Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast, a podcast for those who are in and around the hospitality industry who love, live, and breathe what they do. You can join us for candid and unscripted conversations with hospitality experts and founders as we go deeper into their personal stories while they're sharing their triumphs and trials that got them to where they are today. I'm your host, Will Slickers, and you're listening to an episode of Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast. Now, let's begin. All right, Slick Talkers, we are back at VRMA, recording with the best operators to give you the best insights. And I'm here with Nir, who is Mr. Trio Luxury. And I call him Trio Luxury because Robin Cragen, Rachel Alday, and Nir are the trio of luxury. And I love seeing these three at conferences. Nir, thanks for joining me on the show. Oh, well, such a pleasure, man. I love the Trio Luxury. <laughs> That's a great idea, man. The Trio Luxury. If you guys ever merge, <laughs> let me know. I would love to love to help with the name change. You never know. <laughs> In this today's market, right? There's yeah. always something happening. One thing we are for sure is good friends. Yes. And that's the beautiful thing about this industry. You always can find people that kind of like relate to what you're doing, talk to them about your challenges, run ideas with them. And it's just fantastic. It's awesome. And I love the three of you together. I think it just makes sense. The fact that you guys are in the same luxury market, not lu same luxury markets, but same luxury category, right? Like you're working with upscale properties. And so near before I ruin the story of what you have built, how did you get started in the industry and what made you even want to come to the vacation rental? Oh man, such a great question. So I'm always been an entrepreneur. I've been running companies since I was like 18 years old, oh. always worked for myself. I have a lot of respect for my dad that actually raised me and my brother almost on his own, right? Oh. Back in Israel, building what he's been doing and teaching us to be independent, to be entrepreneur, to run our own and take risk, right? So. Make a long story short, 2020, my brother comes to me and says, hey, we used to run a solar companies. We sold it 2018. I stayed on until 2020. 2020, my brother Katal comes to me and says, bro, I think I figure a really interesting business. You got to come in and check it out. And that's how it all started. I wow. came in. We talked about it. I looked at the numbers. I looked at the home. I looked at the lifestyle and says, we're doing it. So what made you guys choose luxury as a category to really own and dominate it? And what market are you guys specifically in? Because I know you're in the California market, but I don't know what exact area. I've never been able to like actually yeah. look into it. So yeah. like why luxury? So I think almost luxury choose us, right? We used to run a nightclub and a restaurant in LA. Uh, we are part, a part of a big Jewish community and, yeah. and we know a lot of developers and yeah. real estate agents in LA. And we always try to figure out how to connect hospitality and real estate, right? A lot of our friends, a lot of our colleagues, a lot of people that came to our restaurants and, and supported us were big realtors and developers in the community. And we always wanted to figure out how to connect what we learned from hospitality, from providing services in our businesses and, you know, working with the best team members and, and, and all the touch point and SOPs and KPIs and everything that we're doing and real estate. So. That's what we started. We started with, a, I think, a $3 million homes at the beginning. And we did like an arbitrage. We used to do like master lease, right? That's how we kind of started, which is, I don't recommend anyone to go that route, right? Oh. We started with that. We did like three homes, four homes like that. And then pretty quick, we figured out that management is what we want to go after. And that's how it's all started. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So let's talk about the current state of the industry, where things are going from your perspective, because yeah. you know, on the show and our other show, Good Morning Hospitality, we've talked with Jamie Lane and other people in the industry that go into the different categories, right? There's budget, there's economy, there's mid-scale, upper scale, upper, upper scale, luxury, then ultra luxury, and it just keeps going on. Where do you guys see kind of travelers wanting to be when it comes to their dollars? Because I think, right, when you're staying at a $3 million mansion, you're not being cheap. You're definitely paying for the add-ons, and it's going to be an experience. But, like, where does those dollars count, I guess, is like what I want to know. And where do you guys see the uh, that sector of the industry going? So our business is luxury and ultra luxury. And I know there's a lot of conversation about what is luxury, yeah. what depends luxury. You know I mean? That's a, that's a long topic. 
Uh, luxury in LA is pretty impressive. Like what we call luxury, I think it's pretty impressive. Those homes are brand new homes or fully renovated homes. Those homes usually are four bedrooms and up, and all the way up to like eight bedroom, nine bedroom, 10 bedroom, and so on. We find this the best return on our time. We find that you want to be consistent with your clientele. You know, you're like, you're building your database, you're building your brand. So being focused on, on your supply and being focused on what type of clients and personas you want to go after, that's why it's all about fun. That's how you're getting the best closing ratio. That's how you're building the report that you're building and all that good stuff. Where where the industry going? I think we're just going to keep growing this industry. I think like, I'm staying in a hotel yeah. all the time when I'm traveling, yeah. and I love the hospitality aspect of what they do. But will to be honest with you, the yeah. product is not impressive. Yeah. Like, like it's why cutter. will? Yeah, it's cookie cutters. It's it's like it's not interesting. It's there's no character. The building, the rooms are getting smaller and smaller. The prices are getting higher and higher. Yeah. You know, post COVID, we all like the privacy that comes with the home. Yeah. I just came back from Hawaii. I booked a eight bedrooms uh, house in Hawaii in Maui, uh, oceanfront. We ordered a chef to come and cook for our families. We worked out at the gym. My kids jumped in the pool every day. Yeah. How can you be that? Yeah. that? That whole experience of having everyone in one place. I brought family from Israel, I brought family from everyone in one place, eating, enjoying, talking. You know, I don't wanna call my brother to tell him, hey, come down. I just left the room, let's meet in the lobby. Yeah, exactly. It just doesn't work. So yeah. I think our industry is just gonna keep growing. I think more and more customers are making a shift into our industry. People like to travel with their group. People wanna be in control of who they're staying, who they're seeing, yeah. and who they're spending this time. Yeah. We were just talking the other day, it's like two article headlines. One was, when did a $200 hotel ADR become so cheap, quote unquote? And then also family travel and group travel are kind of tying together, right? Like people are doing a lot of family travel now, but groups, I think after COVID, ever since people were like, hey, we have to like, you know, freeze in our house for two weeks. Um, why, are, why are we traveling by ourselves anymore? Why not do these group travels? Why not go with friends or family and do these bigger experiences that probably in all reality is cheaper because you're sharing uh, maybe a thousand dollar home bringing up with like seven to eight people a hundred percent like even my type of booking that consider the upper scale type yeah, yeah. of booking and my type of reservation if you break down the cost per yeah. room you probably are pretty cost effective yeah yeah so beyond that like tell me more about your guys's portfolio structure do you guys do like no more mass release you're not doing the, the arbitrage thing so what? What, what big changes have you guys made in the company? Wow, that's, uh, that's a great question. So first and foremost, uh, we hone in on exclusive properties in our market, in our operating market. Okay. And we currently have about 150 exclusive homes wow. in LA, Hollywood Hills, Venice, Malibu. Uh, and what is unique for us, we also have about 500 non-exclusive homes in our market. 500 non-exclusive homes in our market. And that's okay. a whole topic yeah. on its own. So why did you guys go exclusive and not exclusive? That's a great question. So I'll give you the scenarios my brother Tal is always using. Let's say you have a guest and yeah. we don't do a lot of instant book. Yeah. A lot of our leads, a lot of our clients, it's a relationship. We get an inquiry, we put it in a CRM, we build relationship, we create a proposal, we include other concierge services, we figure out the amenities, we put it, we package it all nicely nice. and we send it in. He sign it, payment, and then we process the booking, right? So let's say I have a guest and he's looking for a court. I know my exclusive home, a tennis court or a pickleball court. <laughs> Hashtag VRMA 2024, right? And Jeremy, go. Jeremy, <laughs> let's go, right? And we, all of our homes with tennis courts are booked. So I can say no to that booking. I can say, sorry, Mr. Customer, yeah. I don't have a home with a tennis court. Well, I can reach out to my local partner yeah. that I trust and I says, hey, is your home is available and go ahead and book them. So I don't know if you know, Will, but we created a platform called LPMS. I did not know. Ah, here you go. This is new. new. This is here on the broadcast, right? It. This is it. brand new. So we're launching it in November. We've been building it for over three years. Mimo Group has been using exclusively that platform. And what that platform does is connecting 
uh, property managers, real estate agents, and travel advisors with global luxury properties all over the world. Wow. So I will work with Rachel. I will work with uh, Robin Craig, and I will work with Emma Villas in Italy, yeah. right? And I will work with Julie from Canada with our luxury properties. And yeah. I will take the best properties all over the world, put them in the system, and have the best travel advisors and as well my clients book those homes all over the world. Wow. So that's the non-exclusive aspect of what we do. Wow. Ne- I think this is the first out of the six yeah. years of doing an interview show. I've never heard of a property manager or a hotelier or whatever structure of hospitality we're in talk about exclusive and non-exclusive management of the property. So this is new, and I have a feeling near that out of the 90,000 people that are going to hear this show, there's going to be some copycats. There's going to be people that want to do this, right? Like, Absolutely. If, why do you think this hasn't been done sooner? I think people are afraid of control. I think people like to control their guest experiences. Uh, I think people always thought that growing your supply is the number one way of growing. But I disagree. I think there is a lot of companies in Europe. I can pop some name like One Fine Stay, yeah. like Collectionist, big operators in Europe that yeah. actually done non-exclusive. And they done it they done it pretty well. So for us, for the MIMO Group, non-exclusive was always a big thing. Yeah. You know, you want to maximize your staff. You have seasonality, yeah. right? So we just I just talked with Adobe, for example, and they're like, yeah, in four months, in five months, we're generating 80% of our revenue. Wow. All right. And what is your client doing during the summer? Yeah. Right. And, and, and they're like, oh, they're booking other destinations. And we're asking them, why are you not booking those other destinations? Yeah. Right. You already established a relationship with that client that trusts you. Why are you sending them out to the woods yeah. to try to figure out what home to book yeah. if you already have a relationship with them? Yeah. So that's what the Mama Group does really good. It's the li- creating those touch points, creating those relationships with our client, and then leverage that relationship, not just to book our homes, yeah. to book other homes all over the world. Well, so working with local, do you work with local competitors? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So what's the reception been from their end? Are they more open to it or do you have to like kind of pull and kind of knock at the door a couple of times? What, what's that so, whole process? So they, it's, it's, they love it because I send them business, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And then they start seeing how I utilize their homes. So they start utilizing my homes for their clients. So it's, 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 you're both feeding each other. We both feeding each other. Wow. Wow. And it's great because I do have boots on the ground on those yeah. markets. Like in LA, I have my own boots on the ground. So my inspectors will check the non-exclusive home. My cleaners may even clean the non-exclusive wow. homes, right? Wow. And if he's missing something, my warehouse is down the street. I go bring my beddings, I go bring my pillows, I go bring whatever I need and just make that home perfect for my guests. So you guys are basically creating the of the industry. You're, you're building a true, a true actual network that feeds into a like greater system beyond itself, which is part like probably doesn't make sense for the listeners. But like if you listen, there's a podcast out there called Acquired. It's a four hour episode on Visa. Highly recommend you listen to it. It's so good. It's four hours, I know, but it's really good. But like Visa, what they build as a network is kind of what you're kind of explaining and how like this is going to affect everybody that has luxury and ultra luxury, whether they know it or not. It's really, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's what I'm going to say. That's Thank you, I'm man. Say. Thank you. Coming from you means a lot. And, you know, it's, we taking it one day by another, like day after a day, we're doing our best and, and we try to do the best we can. Like if you have the ability to share on the show, what other projects do you have in, in the works that maybe would mind blow? So, yeah. Would be- so I, we have a lot, we're launching a new CRM, okay. right? So we work with Sand Square. I know they're, they're, they're the new guys in the block. Shout out to Sand Square. Shout out to Sand Square and Nicola, <laughs> yeah. Nicolas Roy. They're doing an yeah. amazing job. Uh, we working with relaunching a new website. So that's, that's pretty exciting. But most important, I think, is going back to the basics. Like you go on VRMA, you see all this new tech and all these features and all these coolest tools and all that, that which is amazing. But ultimately, I think in 2024, 2025, it's all about going back to the foundation. Yeah you got to go back to your properties and say, hey, how well am I maintaining those homes? How good of supplies I'm putting on those homes? How well am I cleaning those homes? What about safety? 
right? Jason Ford just came back. You know, Justin Ford just came back from from LA, spending a second time with us, and just seeing the progress is how my teams are taking into heart to making our homes even safer and safer. Yeah. So I think that's what it's all about. It's just creating this, keep elevating this industry so guests can trust that when they book with us and they're going to have uh, a, an amazing experience, a painless day, everything is going to look good. Like, you know, when, when I hear about somebody booking a house and there are stains on the beddings and the house is not clean and the maintenance is, the, nothing is working, that's yeah, not the market we want to build. Right, like it's not just about how many homes you have or how many units you have or how great is your website. It's are you taking the time to go back to the fundamentals of this business to make an amazing operation team and an amazing properties for people to stay in and safe. Safety is a huge thing. I take it too hard. Like you hear those stories when people get hurt and stuff like yeah. that. That's no joke. No. So I think that's something that if you're not luxury, if you're Look back into your properties. Ask yourself: Are they safe? Are they well maintained? Jump on your boat. Stay at your yeah. home, right? Feel it. That do I have everything that I need to make those homes amazing? Yeah. And then build it from there. Because once you have a good product, everybody will get want to get it, yeah. right? If the product is bad, it doesn't matter if you have dynamic rates or not. It doesn't matter how many OTAs you put in it. It doesn't matter how much money you put in marketing. If you're not go back and look at your clients' reviews. Ask yourself, ask them what they need and give them an amazing home that, you know, nothing will happen. Back to the basic people. Back, Back to the, the basics. basics. I love Nir, you got me so fired up. Thank you so much for taking the time to yeah, stay with me here at BRMA. Share a little bit of your story. This is not our normal length of an episode for Slick Talk, as you know, but Slick Talkers, this will not be the only time that I have Nir on the show. We are going to do a deeper dive, I promise. But Nir, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. I'm so glad that we got to do this. So thank you so much. Well, it's been a pleasure. Good seeing you. And it's great to be here in VRMA. Let's do it. Let's do it. it. Thank you so much for listening. And thank you to our show partners for making Slick Talk, the hospitality podcast possible. We hope you enjoyed the show and we would love to connect with you outside of the podcast. So you can follow us on all of our social media channels for daily hospitality content or find us on slicktalkthepodcast.com. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. I'm your host, Will Slickers, and we will see you guys all again next week.